Utopia. The Universal Translators in this great hall will translate this world in your various languages and dialects to mean a place where everything is perfect. For the Terrans, however, its linguistic roots mean something different. To them, it literally translates to unplace, a place that cannot exist, should not exist. I am here today as a representative of the Hinarius League to talk to you esteemed members of the Council about how the Terrans created a place that cannot exist, how the Imperium created a utopia. The Sanuri are a race of sentience most of you likely won't have heard of. They are spread among free worlds of temperate climate and below galactic average gravity. Their societies are primitive. And they currently have a basic command of fire. Their governance systems are tribal and they dwell in natural geological formations of their planets as well as in the ruins of their forebear cities. When they were discovered through their communications and energy signatures, they were already a Type 1 civilization, capable of completely harnessing the energy of their homeworld, Senu Alpha. By the time a cataloging mission was sent to their star system, the Sanuri had already developed spacefaring vessels capable of relativistic speeds, and successfully migrated to two other players within their galactic neighborhood. They were ruled by a democratic federation, formed by the semi-autonomous planetary governments that had been established. Most impressively, the developments they had made in almost all fields of science and technology far exceeded the expectations for any species as young as they were. In fact, it seemed like the only other species they could be compared to in that regard were the Terrans. Something that, as you can imagine, raised a great deal of concern at the time. It was in this very hall some 4,000 years ago that the fate of the Sonuri was discussed by your predecessors, whether another terror would be allowed to emerge in the galaxy. Alas, before a consensus could be reached. The Imperium of Terra made the decision for them. Communication records show that Terra established contact with the Sanuri, while the Council was still weighing the pros and cons of annihilating the fledgling civilization. I can only assume some members at the time were relieved that the burden of extinguishing free worlds with a sentience was lifted from their shoulders, as they, reasonably, believed the Imperium would be declaring war and exterminating the Sanuri Federation for them. As it turns out, they were only half right. Everyone expected Terran strike forces to be deployed in Sanuri space. The galactic economy braced for a prolonged war, given their Sanuri's technological parity with the Imperium, and Terra's enemies stood ready to take advantage of a weakened foe after the war was over. Except, there was no war. No strike forces ever came, no astral legions were amassed, no blockades imposed, no iron swipes initiated. What came instead was more akin to aid. The Terrans provided the Sanuri with ample resources. Enough energy, food, and raw materials to satisfy the needs of every Sinurian ten times over. It was nothing for the Imperium, whose dominion spanned across a million worlds and stars beyond counting. But for the Sinuri, it meant they would never have to toil again. No conflicts would ever arise between the Federation's planetary governments again over resource allocation. No two Sinuri citizens would ever need to compete over food or any other material wealth ever again. They had become a post-scarcity civilization overnight the first and only post-scarcity civilization the galaxy had ever seen. It didn't stop there either. The Imperium took it upon itself to provide medical care for the Sonuri as well. Genome therapy, cybernetic augmentation, antiviral and antibacterial advancements. Over the course of a single generation, the average Sonuri lifespan had increased by a factor of five. Material shortages and medical problems had been extinguished at seemingly the blink of an eye. Climate, too, was tamed by the Terrans on behalf of the Sonuri. Advanced planet-forming installations were built on the worlds inhabited by the Sonuri, securing the perfect climate conditions for them. Even gravity itself was bent and twisted by the Terrans. Gravity engines were placed deep beneath their planet's surface, reducing the gravitic forces exerted upon the Sonuri, making their lives easier still. For centuries, it was paradise. No conflict, no scarcity, and death itself was more of a nuisance for the Sonuri. The galaxy was confused, to put it mildly. Diplomatic exchanges were openly questioning the sanity and motives of the Imperium. The Sonuri were a small enough civilization that providing them with such abundance was possible, but what was the reason to give them luxuries that the Terran citizens themselves couldn't attain in a mass scale? Then, something interesting was observed. The once galloping technological, scientific and industrial sectors of the Sonuri Federation had grinded to a halt. What reason is there to advance in those fields? when you already have everything you could ever need. The arts gained more and more influence within their society, but even those, according to art scholars, became more and more shallow 
as time passed in the scenery paradise, devolving into increasingly base forms of entertainment. Expressions of deeper emotions were replaced by little more than mindless distractions to the mundanity of constant abundance. The scenery sank further and further into depravity, while terror provided them with the means to do so. Communications monitoring of the Federation's democratic processes revealed that as time passed, interest from the citizens in participating in their own governance plummeted. They were preoccupied with finding newer and more extreme methods of alleviating their boredom. Apathy for their democracy evolved into a more general apathy. Infrastructure that had taken centuries to be developed was left to decay and crumble around them. Buildings collapsed and cities became death traps as the Sonuri continued to live lives of luxury and excess, seemingly without care about their declining surroundings. The mass riots that broke out almost at the same time across all three Sonuri worlds were the pinnacle of this phenomenon. By this point, the communications we were able to intercept and record had become scarce, and no real justification was ever discerned for the riots, other than their entertainment value. The Sonuri, a civilization that once had the potential of becoming a galactic contender, was reduced to setting its own crumbling cities on fire. Millions, if not billions, butchered each other at the time. Killing and maiming indiscriminately. Survival instincts that had been twisted through lack of use for far too long were now revealing themselves with a vengeance. Military technologies that had remained dormant for eons were unleashed for no greater purpose than wanton bloodshed. Weapons of mass destruction, developed ages prior to defend against enemies that never came, were being used by brother against brother. What video recordings of the riots we managed to intercept revealed madness and callousness, unmatched by even the Imperium's worst atrocities. By the time the fires had burned themselves out, and the rivers of blood had run dry, the Sonuri had become outcasts in their own worlds. Trying to live beneath the hostile skies, they had choked with ash. In time, they forgot what they once were. Their need for survival had overcome everything else, and they developed into a species that is too busy looking for the next meal to ever bother looking to the stars. It will take them millennia, if ever, to achieve them what they once took for granted. There was the end of the Utopia, the Terrans gifted the Sonuri. Now the Imperium of Terror has developed the Breachfield Harvesting Method. They have opened communications with the members of the Council, offering it to them. They offer you a gift of infinite energy and resources. No one in the galaxy will have to toil or fight ever again. They offer you Utopia, a place that cannot exist. A place that should not exist.